<laughs> yeah. Well, how long was that? Six minutes? <laughs> no way. Why did it go on? you got to be kidding me. 10.30. Ten thirty. No, no way, no way, no way. <laughs> That's insane. Wow. I'm text my friend to see if he picked one up. <laughs> what time is it? 36. <laughs> yep. Just before driving uh, here. Apparently, before, uh, the UAE was, was selling them cheaply. Yeah. <laughs> that was the last batch, right? That was it. It was done. Uh, that's crazy. Okay. The last, last. <laughs> right. Also, so in an ideal situation, do you have any idea of what, how many ships you'd like to have? He gets all excited. Four minutes ago, Terry. He gets all excited. He's like, oh, yeah. Like, all right, we've got to keep We've got to keep balance. Let's not. Hey, <laughs> minutes. What can we have? Sorry, what was that? We all got excited first. No, no, that's good. That's an exciting time right there. That's amazing. <laughs> but I was just wondering, ideally, in your ideal scenario for Star Citizen, how many ships, whether they be NPC controlled or players, in the best case scenario, could you fit in a single area? I guess. I mean, I know instances and everything take things in a different direction, but so, just so if so I could see them on my screen. Uh, well, I mean, I guess the. I mean, the I mean, that's part of the reason why we're doing the dogfighting. You'll probably have, you'll be able to see more characters down on the planet side than you will in space, um, more discrete players. And then in space, it's also kind of slightly dynamic because um, people aboard a ship are, count slightly differently than um, like different space vehicles. So it's kind of hard to say because that's why we're doing the dogfighting. Um, Alpha is to basically balance to see how many ships we can. Like have in a, in one area and have it still be fun and, and not be problematic because there's a higher amount of fidelity of the updates. Um, so it's it's hard to say. I mean, I, I I won't be able to give you a proper answer until probably the end of this year. But hopefully, shooting for at least as many as Battlefield has. <laughs> That'd be wonderful. Battlefield's a lot of fun when you get all your friends in there and you get to play as a team or against each other. Yeah, so that'd well, be wonderful I'm actually too. hoping that on the multiplayer ships. <laughs> We can actually fit some more people in because the simulation of the multiplayer ships, because everyone's discreet, um, like in terms of, uh, like your big issues of like updating on a server to a client, I'm sorry if it's going to get technical with people, but the big issues are always about um, communicating data to all the clients. Now, if I'm, I'm a ship and someone else is in it, there's 10 people on an address. From my perspective as a ship, I don't care what the 10 people are doing inside the address because I'm not inside it. I only care what the actual address is doing and what the turrets are doing on it. Um, so I actually don't need to know anything about the people running around on the ship on the address. Whereas if you're in the address, you do know about the people running around the ship, but vice versa, you don't need to know about the other people on the ship. So actually, uh, the amount of updating that happens there is actually the setup of like space and how like Star Citizen is, is actually better for that kind of stuff than, for instance, say Battlefield, where you're all sort of on the ground in first person. Uh, so I'm hoping that like you can fit more players, an instance, when you've got multi like a multi crew ship doesn't count as much against the player cap, if, if that makes any sense. Uh, so we'll uh, that makes perfect sense. I work in IT, so all that's great. I have a lot of questions about the server that I'm sure you couldn't answer yet, anyways. And uh, we're still in that. And also, Jason Spangler, who's our um, CTO, is uh, he needs basically the prime architect of the back end stuff. I mean, his background was, you know, he was one of the senior programmers on Ultima Online, right when they first built it. and at the end, ended up being the, um, the you know technical director of, of Origin and all the UO stuff, and then when I did it for um, the whatever Age of Dark Age of Camelot guys, and then was on um, uh, the Old Republic at Bioware in Austin. So he's got a huge amount of like uh, big sort of MMO experience, and we've talked through. There's a system that I sort of kind of I sort of fleshed out in a big big picture design um, while I was doing the prototype and. That's essentially the system we're implementing, but he's, you know, there's a lot of details that go into the big picture implementation that he's he's an expert on. I'm not really an expert on um, all the, all the kind of stuff that I'm more focused on. Like, does it look cool or does it blow up? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's how you deal with redundancy in data packets. <laughs> well, it's much more fun to fix, picture the blowing up than the redundancy <laughs> portion. For um, multiplayer ships. If you have a gunner that, say, uh, gets injured or even dies on your ship, is there uh, any way you could have, like, a person who maybe is trained or just has medical supplies to either revive or heal that person, or are they just going to die in the same sense that we've already heard in Death of a Spaceman, where they're just going to come back on their planet, or 
do you have any idea how that's going to work that way? Um, I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, I think, yeah, I mean, what you're really talking about is like if you're in close, like, um, you know, uh, on, the, on, you know, shipboarding actions and someone gets hit and, you know, can you help them out or patch them up or drag them out? So, I mean, I think there'll be a certain amount of that. I mean, you already have, um, you know, we're running in CryEngine. And right now, we've basically got everything Crisis 3's got. So all that first-person stuff's already sitting in our code base, all the weapons, all the attachments. So that actually, that side of stuff is actually pretty uh, easy to implement. So the big questions are, what extra stuff are we going to do for, say, zero-G stuff? What are we going to do if there's, like, a decompression? And then if you want to add extra stuff like, um, you know, fixing pop someone up with a medipack or pulling them out or whatever. So I will say that the combat's probably going to be sort of more tactical, and it's not going to be like a straight ahead, just blast a whole bunch of people, because essentially if you're boarding a ship, it's not like you're going in and you're going to blast 50 or 60 people. It's going to be like maybe... Running down a narrow corridor and <laughs> getting yeah. lit up by a ton of people at the other end. It's going to be like three, three, you know, three against three or four against four or something. So yeah. that's tactical. So I think it would be more along the lines of something like a, a Daisy, where it's, you know, more, you know, it's, it's, it's more realistic in terms of, you know, you can't just take a million bullets and, and still, <laughs> like, you know, sit around the corner and let the red, like, fade away from your screen and I then get back to normal. We're not doing slow-mo breaching sequences? <laughs> <laughs> um, are players going to be able to, like, special... I know there's not a leveling system or any kind of an RPG aspect, but if a player has a, has a way to repair their ship on the outside or whether that's from the inside... Is that all just going to be skill based on the player, like a timing mechanic? Press space bar now, hit R now, and then that'll do the repair. Or is it going to be some other kind of fashion where you have a toolbox and you sit there and you hold a button and it just does the repair for you? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I did, well, basically, I, I, uh, we are going to do like EVA stuff, and you are going to be able to repair stuff. Um, I don't. I'm not necessarily sure that. Um, we're going to have any particular level, like all of a sudden I'm now a level 3 repairer dude, uh, because that's against the principle of this. It's not. I don't really want any sort of leveling of the characters. It's more about what you do and how you equip the stuff. So I think the repairs are going to be mostly about you have the right equipment, you know, if you exited the ship and you're repairing it, it will take some time to repair or fix it. And of course, if you're fixing a your ship and someone else shows up when you're outside your ship, it's probably not great. <laughs> but kind of the idea is that, you know, like, Maybe you take some damage and you need to go outside and just patch a few things so you can limp home and then get it fixed properly on when you land on the planet. <laughs> that sounds like a good thing to do. Um, on players, do you have any idea how long they're going to last? Because one thing you were mentioning, Daisy, if we run onto their website right now, they'll have an average player life of, I think, it's around 20 minutes right now or less, and they're dead. <laughs> and, and with us, it's not. I mean, that's the whole that death of a spaceman idea. Is like The idea is you actually, you know, in, like... You know, you, you basically essentially die uh, multiple times. It's like lives. And then after you've expended all those, that's when you really die. So it's sort of close to death and you get revived or whatever. Um, so it's not going to be like DayZ where, bam, it's done and you got to start a new character because not only, not only do you pass along um, your possessions to your next of kin, but you have multiple times where you basically can come back. And the other thing is if you're, like, in a fight and you lose the fight and you eject and you're in space, as long as someone doesn't shoot you, which is a pretty bad crime, uh, basically shoot you floating hopelessly in space, you haven't lost a life. So you basically will just get recovered and you'll start back on your planet. So that doesn't really count against it. So I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that uh, as long as you're not terrible and as long as people are out to, <laughs> you're in an area of space where there's no law and people just basically kill every pilot that ejects because they like to do that, um, you, your character should last you quite a long time. I mean, there may be you know, characters, people that keep the same character for a, for a couple of years if they don't get into too much combat or manage to eject and not, or not get killed. So I, I kind of want some attachment you have to your character and it lasts some time and then when you finally bite the bucket and you go to the funeral, it like has some emotional impact on you. Yeah, that would be a lot of fun. Get you really invested in it. It's always good. Yeah, well that's kind of the idea of the emotion. The idea is sort of like there is a sense of progression in time. So that's the whole idea of the constant updating of the universe, because if we weren't constantly updating it, you wouldn't get a sense of time moving on. Like if you did a big yearly drop or something like sometimes some of the other big MMOs do, you wouldn't, like everything would just feel in stasis and then you update it once and then maybe things have just changed. Whereas with us, our idea is like the same way on the website that we have all these posts every week. 
the idea is we'll be updating content on a you know, hopefully a weekly basis. If not, it would be at least a you know bi-monthly basis. Uh, and you know, it doesn't mean that we're doing massive updates every time, but we're like you know, you know, one week we could be adding a new system, another week we're be adding a new ship, another week we could be adding a new mission series that would be sort of like a scripted mission series that perhaps you can get some you know a cool item for. Um, and we're also constantly updating like the internal sort of uh, news or stories, and we'll be reflecting, we'll be um, fashioning some of our content and missions around what we see happening in the world, what the players are doing, and we'll also be reflecting it in like the gossip or the news articles and stuff. So the idea is that if players, if things are happening, you start to, their actions in some way inform and affect the actual, you know, games and what the NPCs are doing too. That's good. Um, one of the questions I have, or my friend had about one of the ships, he was trying to think of good ways to do dogfighting if he had somebody on his tail that he just couldn't get around because his ship couldn't turn as sharp and the person just kept on him. Could he potentially cut his main thruster, flip around backwards, and just keep going the exact same direction but shooting behind him at that point? Like yeah. the, the physics allow for you just to keep going after you cut so, out. So totally. I mean, so we're, we're allowing like a level. So like you have your basic uh, flight control fly-by-wire system. And, uh, you know, that probably doesn't allow you to do that. But if you upgrade it or change it or hack it or whatever you do, uh, you certainly will be able to sort of turn over, sort of turn off control features. And so there's no reason the physics simulation will totally handle that. So I kind of see the people getting, like, an advanced flight control system that will allow them to turn aspects of the fly-by-wire off. And one of them could be, okay, um, you know, don't, don't be correcting my velocity right now. I'm going to just use my maneuvering jets to change my attitude. But my... My overall, like linear velocity vector is going to stay the same, which is which is what you described, which is basically you're going this way, you you do your maneuvering jets to spin around, but you keep going this way, and you sort of as you're going backwards, you're essentially shooting at the guy chasing you. Cool. That'll I think that'll uh, give us a lot of options and really interesting dogfights because uh, totally, there's a lot. So there's a lot. I mean, I've been you know I've been talking to the, the folks here too that like there's a there's also an idea that along some of the maneuvers, like um, when you're doing very radical maneuvers, like you're having a big um, delta in your velocity vector change, you're actually exert you'll be exerting like forces on the pilot, and at a certain point, you know your body can only take so many. So usually a flight control system would limit the how, how quickly you could alter your the, your velocity vector, uh, but we're going to let pilots like on a more advanced rig turn that off and so there's always in every flight system there's always safe and then there's like some uh, buffer and then it becomes like lethal and so you know if someone really wants to they could like be living on the edge by sort of pushing past the envelope and hopefully not going so far that they black out because if you black out then obviously that's not good for combat because you know you lose consciousness and then you're kind of a sitting duck until you come come around so I think there'll be a fair amount of nuance and then you'll also be able to adjust the various like power that you're putting to your thrusters, your shields, all those kind of things. So maybe if you're in a tight turning battle, you take the you take the gamble of dropping power to your shields to pump more power to your thrusters to, to generate a little more force to have a little tighter turn. So that's all sort of those kind of like um, you know sort of rock paper scissors swings and roundabouts decisions that I think will make the combat more interesting. Right. Is there uh, any chance of maybe getting better flight suits that'll allow you to do harder turns than you would otherwise normally? Uh, yeah, no, definitely. I mean, like, so if you see in the uh, 300i commercial, there's a whole, he's, like, basically wearing a, like, a uh, sort of, it's kind of like, it's a sort of more modern day, like, kind of um, suit that allows that, has, you know, a lot of, like, all those, like, ribbing in that suit are really sort of um, things to sort of keep your, the, the pressure and your blood point, because that's what you do, you constrict it. Um, and um, so there will definitely be some of that you can do, but it'll only go so far. So there isn't going to be a, there isn't going to be the magic, magical inertial dampening system that like cuts everything out but there will be some that will allow you to maybe push it a bit more than 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 no system or um, you know a, a lower grade spacesuit uh bringer mc from chat had a question he asked can a power plant go critical due to external damage or system overload if that is the case do some ships have the ability to eject their power plant uh, yes, it can go critical, and not at the moment. We don't have an ability to eject the power plant. You may want to actually eject as a pilot instead. <laughs> <laughs> Prioritize. That may be the quicker option. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can definitely, you can overdraw power, 
and you can damage your weapons, especially if you do things like trying to like overclock them to to, to push out a little more damage. It's just the same way you could like damage a computer component if you're building your own PC and you're overclocking it. Right. Trying to think of something else maybe somebody has here. Well, Kyle, you were amazingly popular in the Twitch chat. They say you're the best interview we've had all night. <laughs> well then, thank you, Twitch. So um, I know that we've already talked a little bit about planetary ex exploration, and you guys said that eventually someday maybe if you can get there you would like to do it if, and I know that's a really big if, at that, but if you had your dream come true where you had the resources or the time to actually explore a planet or do something on it, do you know what you'd like to do, whether it be just an arena combat or some kind of actual campaign on the ground where you're fighting off the Vanduul? Well, okay, so so it's actually not a technical issue that prevents us from like doing more on the ground. So yeah, right now when you land on a planet, mostly it's a sort of it's a it's a first person environment you're wandering around. But we're like deliberately not having combat on there, and we're having a fairly contained area only because you know we, you know, I think we promised 100 star systems, and there's actually 115 in our current map. And each star system can have multiple planets, and some of those planets can have multiple locations you can land on. So it's, I mean, we've literally got hundreds and hundreds of locations that we have to create and model. Um, so it's really a content issue because right now the engine we could be down, and you know it could be no different than you see in. Crisis one, crisis two, crisis three. We could model a pretty big world, and you wander around and do all the rest. But you know, there's a reason why, like, just doing a crisis game takes them several years, and they're only doing like even a section of New York or something when they do it in all that detail. So it's really a content issue. So I definitely foresee down the road once we're live and we're doing well, and maybe we can, you know, uh, you know, we're doing well enough that there's you know enough of a um, sort of revenue coming in that we can deploy some more resources. We certainly can turn on things like combat on the ground in areas or expand an area. So that would be kind of things I would do in certain areas. I would like add more detail to the city. So you got more places you can visit, more places you can explore, maybe some places you can get into our, you know, some first person combat. Um, so it's not really a limitation of the technology we've got. It really is just a content thing because you know we've you know already the game's hugely ambitious. We've got like all these I mean every one of those ships that we build, um, you know, like just something simple like the uh, three hundred I is a three month to four month job, and then like something like the Cor the Bengal is more like a six month job. Uh, the Corvette will probably be something like a five month job or something. Then, and that's not just one artist; that's like quite a few artists working on it to build it. So it's just that there's a level of like content detail that we're doing for the ships, the characters, and then we've got you know whatever it is. I think it's two or three hundred environments that we've got to wander around. So that's just a really daunting um, way uh, amount of content to deliver. So um, so we're going to get that done first, and then we'll sort of build from there. But essentially, I would like to like expand out more back alleys, more like places to explore, go around, and you know have more intrigue down on the planets um, that would sort of match up with what's happening in space. Right. Um, now in space, um, one of my friends asked me about um, weather patterns because you know in a lot of games now they do really good at involving weather, like rain or fog or thunderstorms, and now may not be quite as expansive in space, but could there be any kind of an atmospheric change or like electrical storm in space that could affect maybe a situation that you're in or just screw with your instruments to a point that it could uh, further make more interesting yeah, dogfights? Most definitely. I think we had this conversation and question earlier. Maybe it was the same person that you got off chat wrong. It, it <laughs> might have been. This <laughs> might have come up. Um, but yeah, no, no. So yeah, so the idea is to sort of have space itself uh, feel kind of like an environment in cases. So, like you know, definitely like uh, we're we're doing some stuff for Nebula and some other stuff where we'll have um, you know we want to try and get like almost a bit of a fluid simulation going for the Nebula and, and um, you know maybe there's some that are like an electromagnetic storm that will like damage some of your equipment or reduce your visibility uh, electronically. So yes, so basically we want to have more of a sense of terrain in space. That was one thing that. I thought Freelancer did well. That was one of the design goals. Was space wasn't just going to be black, empty space. It was going to have terrain to it, and we're definitely going to be doing that in Star Citizen too. Okay, 
I've heard some people also talk about at some point, and I don't remember who I heard it from, but they were talking about space stations. I don't know if that was confirmed at all, but are those just maybe a persistent item that people can capture back and forth or just more like trading stations like you'd find uh, on a planet? So space stations are uh, mostly going... Uh, so yes, they'll be a persistent item that people can go back and forth and they can be combat on them. Um, I, we haven't decided if maybe there are some space stations that are safe, that are more like a planet. Um, that may be the case because we may make a decision there's a few places you'll need that. But in general, um, you know, a lot of the space stations will be like an asteroid base, which there'll be a persistent entity sitting out in space that people can um, fight for control of in the more lawless areas. I believe this could be destroyed. I think Ben might have said something about that, maybe, not to point fingers. Uh, I don't know about destroying like an asteroid base or a space station. I think you know, the most you would do is... is like that severely damage it just to repair it, but I don't think in the case of those that we would, I, I, my sense is we wouldn't be destroying them. No, putting C4 on the core. And... Uh, no, I mean, you know, it could be mechanical. I don't know. So you never, you never, <laughs> don't rule it out, but uh, at the moment, in the moment, in, in my head, I'm designed that wasn't something that we're necessarily destroying. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> so, Chris, I have an important question for you. Yeah. The chat roll is blowing up, and they're so impressed with Kyle they want to give him a CPU. <laughs> sure. Do you want a AMD uh, A8 uh, 86, 860K? I think it is. An 860K. I, that's going to be hard to turn down. <laughs> Four point two gigahertz. Yeah. You guys are going to make me build another computer. I, guess, <laughs> I think I can get on board with that. Right. All right. Cool. I think I have to thank Here. chat for that. You have one. Well, thank yeah. chat for that. Thank you, Twitch. Thank there you go. Thank you, Twitch. <laughs> um, I did see a question roll by there about the mod tools. Are they going to be full enough to where people could make their own planets for their servers if they were so inclined and talented to do so? Uh, yes. So I think that like the, the the fully featured level of all the mod tools will probably will be doing our persistent universe alpha and beta. And then when we got the live version out, then the sort of modding stuff would, would be coming out after that. We'll be, we'll, we'll be rolling out some parts of the modding along the way. So we're going to be doing something about building ships uh, in the later half of this year. But um, the full tool set, which will be pretty involved, uh, will be available um, on the road. And yeah, you should be able to build a you know, planet, an environment down on the planet, build the ships uh, if you're so inclined, tweak stats, do all that kind of thing. Oh, very good. That should be a lot of fun. Basically, it'll be close to sort of the environment we use. <laughs> and there, there are going to be some, for, for some of us out there, I mean, we've dealt with a lot of servers in the past where it's really hard to import your own co uh, content. Are you guys creating some easy way to import stuff into the world so we can test it? Or is it going to be just a little bit more involved than uh, just dropping a file into a folder? Are you talking about the persistent universe? Are you talking about your uh, private server? My own personal private server. If I was testing and making something that maybe I wanted to submit to you. If you're a private server, you'd basically be testing it on uh, like your machine and seeing it right then. So it's, it's like, I mean, we're built on CryEngine. So, like, what you see for like the modding tools in Crisis 2 and Crisis 3 is pretty much similar. It's this tool called Sandbox, which is the editor we use for all our stuff. It's in the free SDK. And essentially, you can pretty much do anything in that. Um, it's the only thing you're sort of limited is you don't like you can't recode some of the systems. Awesome. Sorry, chatting to some of those uh, twitchers there. <laughs> 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 They're very twitchy, going so fast. It's hard to keep up with them. Let's see here. Almost thought somebody was asking about bacon, but they were asking about a beacon. <laughs> <laughs> Bacon's an important question. Will we be able to have bacon on our iteruses? <laughs> you may be able to have bacon. You may be able to have a beacon too. <laughs> bacon in deep space. Yeah. Something pirates go after. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't want to lose your bacon shipments. That'll be bad. That'll that'll make them all angry. Bacon confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> Got that. Don't want to get out that redactor cannon. Good thing Austin's not here. <laughs> Yeah, no, they're probably all going back going, oh, God, Chris is, Chris is probably bacon. <laughs> That's very schedule. I just need a bacon logo for all my ships, just, like, to slap that on the side. 
Uh, let's see here. So when you're um, getting on those uh, space stations, like I was talking about, um, when you initially find one of those or you initially find the Bengal carriers, do you have to clear them from any kind of an NPC or are they just going to be open and you just kind of hop in it and take it for yourself? Uh, no, no, no. I, I don't think, I mean, I, I think you'll probably have to capture the Bengal carrier to use it. So they'll be populated with an NPC of some kind, do you think? Yes, like a janitor, night staff. <laughs> yes, there's, 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 there's a key. Some security guards, maybe some mall cops. <laughs> Quit killing out of the mall. Steve, you had one job. Hit you with your vibrator. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, that'll uh, be, I like, so, so, I mean, depending, I mean, because, you know, obviously there'll be some, like, space stations that'll be in safe space, and you, you pretty much can't try and take it over, or else everybody in the UEE will be after you. But definitely some of the, you know, the bigger sort of prize ships, like the bigger capital ships, because I think we're sort of thinking that, like, anything beyond the Destroyer would probably not be purchasable and in-game at all by a player. They would have to, like, essentially sort of capture one and take one over or something. Uh, and those will obviously should be an achievement to be able to, 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 to take it over. And then after that, once you have it, you've got to keep it from everyone else that wants to take it from you. All right. So we've been hearing a little bit about there being racing events in the game, kind of like tournaments and ways to win a little bit of money that way maybe. Do you have any idea like how expansive that's going to be? Are there going to be long-range runs, like try to get from planet A to B faster than your competition, or are they going to be more like circuit tracks like you'd see in NASCAR? I think we, uh, we've discussed doing both, actually. I mean, that's all part of the Murray Cup. So I think there's, a, there's kind of like a long-distance relay version we've talked, right? And then there's yeah. a sort of short-circuit one, right? Yeah, it's basically uh, all within the one system of Atlas. So there's like one leg of it would be, I think, navigating the Atlas 11 asteroid field. Uh, and there's planet runs. And there's so it's basically it's, you try to get a combination of points to get access to the Murray Cup. And then the Murray Cup is sort of a, you know, the best of the best compete in that. And that's another series of, um, I'm trying to think of the style of race that it's it's modeled after. But. Uh, they sort of will do them in heats, so it's like a relay. Not a relay. It's, it's a, a the like camel run type deal. <laughs> Ida rod. Something I can't remember. Uh, too tired. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so there's there's been talk of we're just trying to figure out like it's all going to take place within the one system, but figuring out like how each leg of the race will be, um, you know, speed, sometimes agility, and then there's the combat versions of it. So it'll be sort of a combination of all of those to culminate to the Murray Cup. Sounds like a good place for that Daisy average lifetime billboard sign. <laughs> <clears throat> um, there are a couple of questions from chat here. Uh, one of them was uh, asking a little bit more about the dynamic events. So I heard you mention at some point, I believe it was you talking about um, there just being maybe a random boss or just someone who's a little bit more badass than the rest that are out there that if you kill them, you get some special award or bobble doll <laughs> can you expand on how you plan on doing that? it's just the, the idea is that like sort of the equivalent of like what you would call like a, a traditional sort of boss monster um you know say it's a really bad you know a badass sort of pirate um lord or something um they're in the game they're not they're basically it's not like dave haddock can blow them up and then i blow them up a second later if Dave gets to him before I wins that battle, which will be really hard, um, he's gone. And then you know, there will be another pirate that will take his place eventually, but it won't be the same guy. It'll be a different person. And so, you know, we have, you know, the auto name generator has some R&D. But other than that, the idea is that you've achieved that. You've, you've killed that particular pirate or that particular badass, you know, whatever it would be, mercenary or... Uh, uh, and that's your that's your sort of like trophy that you can hang on the wall. And like when you when your character finally passes away, it's part of like your eulogy. It's entered into the Galactopedia that you are the guy that you know killed or defeated whatever. The Dread Parrot Roberts is the example I always give. <laughs> so I know this has been talked about a lot, but um, one of the chatters here was asking about uh, end-of-life content for the game. Well, not end-of-life, but end-of-game. So, you know, we're getting out there. We've got all the ships we want. You know, they kind of want to know what are we planning to keep them interested in it to keep them in the game. 
Uh, well, I think I, so. So that my focus is not like the level grind that you traditionally see, where we're like, oh, how do we get up to eighty-five? Or how do we get up to ninety? My focus is really sort of creating a sandbox for all these factions of players to fight over a limited amount of resources. And uh, I guess you know the ultimate goal for one player group would be to sort of have as most and control most of those resources. But there'll be enough of other groups in opposition to that that it will it will probably be sort of a swings and balances. So. I don't really think that 